Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be talking about a big pattern change that is on the horizon that'll bring a couple of big storms to the United States that may bring some heavy rainfall, perhaps even some severe weather, and as well as some big cooldowns behind them just in time for Thanksgiving week. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast, but let's begin with what's happening across the United States today, and we'll start with the Gulf Coast, which is an area that has been very active over the last several days. We've actually had a low pressure system that has been moving west to east over Texas. Now that is going closer to the Gulf Coast, kind of sitting now in the Gulf of Mexico. And what that's allowing for is a ton of rainfall and as well as a lot of cloud cover across the southeast this evening. And that is going to continue all the way through Wednesday, Thursday, and even Friday of this week. So it's going to stay active across the southeast with lots of rainfall, some thunderstorms to go along with it. We might see a very low end tornado risk on Thursday in parts of southern Florida, but again, the risk overall would be pretty low. Back over into the Midwest, we have some cloud cover, but no rain really associated with any of that activity. This is due to a disturbance that's back up in Canada. That is your low pressure system sitting well off to the north of the United States. All this is going to bring is cloud cover to most of the Midwest. We'll have a better chance of a bigger storm as we get closer to Thursday and to Friday of this week that will actually bring a cool down to much of the Midwest, and we'll talk about more details on that here in just a couple minutes. Back over in the Pacific Northwest, staying overall pretty dry. It's been very active for the last couple weeks, but it is beginning to wind down. And also into the southern tier and southwest of the United States, we have some clouds, but again, nothing really crazy. It's really, again, been a very inactive last month or two when it comes to severe weather, which is not typical for this time of the year. We usually have a lot more severe weather days, especially in the southern plains, and eventually transitioning to the Dixie Alley as we get closer to December. So again, very weird stuff overall. It's been active when it comes to the cold fronts and the big cool downs and heat waves that we've been seeing over the last couple months, but again, severe weather has been very lackluster recently, and again, knock on wood. All right, let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next several days, because we will actually have a chance maybe for some severe weather as we go into this upcoming weekend, and perhaps into early next week. So we're going to look at the jet stream here, and we again, we do have that low pressure system sitting back down in the Gulf of Mexico, bring some showers and storms to parts of the Gulf Coast, and as well as Florida. Jet stream, the polar jet streams well back up here to the north, which is mainly a zonal jet stream, which usually means calmer conditions overall or at least less major storms ongoing but as we go to thursday to friday things are going to change a bit so again notice as we go into thursday evening we'll actually have a low pressure system located just north of north dakota keep that in the back of your head here for a second and then back over just west of california here's another low pressure system a little bit further to the west for its center but that'll be our next big storm that could impact the united states bringing the potential for maybe some severe weather as we go into the later half of the weekend so as we go into friday into saturday that low pressure system moves across parts of the Great Lakes. A cold front is going to come with this. So we are going to see a cool down for much of the Midwest and even parts of the Central Plains back into the Ohio Valley as we go into Friday and Saturday. And I'll show you more details on how cold it'll get here in just a moment. Here's that big storm again. It's just off to the west of California by Saturday. By the time we go into Sunday and Monday, it crosses over the Rocky Mountains. By the way, very strong jet streak right here. Winds upwards of 180 miles per hour in the jet stream, which is obviously very strong. Back over in the Southern Plains, that's where a low pressure system will be by Monday. And this is what we're going to have to watch for closely is how organized the system actually becomes. And will we get a strong enough low level jet and even a jet stream for some severe weather? Will there be enough instability? And will the dew points be supportive of severe weather? Well, we likely will have the dew points if this system's this far down to the south with a strong southerly wind and which will be pulling moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico. And also we will have some instability and I'm going to show you more details on that here in a second, but I don't know if it's going to be enough for some sort of significant and severe weather events. So this is going again into Sunday night into Monday. We're going to have a low pressure system down here in the Southern Plains. By the way, crazy looking jet stream here on the European model going into Monday night into Tuesday morning. Low pressure system eventually by Tuesday morning located over parts of the uh, Mississippi Valley and as well as back down into parts of the lower Midwest. By the time we go into Wednesday, this moves off to the north and east. And with this very, very sharp divide here on the jet stream, you might be thinking an Arctic blast is incoming from this, right? Actually, not pro probably not because we're going to be having the system going from west to east and usually when that happens it's not really bringing much of colder air if we're going to get colder air this system would have to come out of canada where the colder air resides during this time of the year which we're not going to have so just kind of a little fun fact there once we go into wednesday and thursday the system likely clears out and by the time we get to thanksgiving many of us should be on the drier side of things so thanksgiving plans look a little bit nice here's the future radar to go along with that so again rainfall across the gulf coast will continue for the next several days flooding potential does exist upwards of six to 
10 inches of rain in isolated locations will be possible in parts of Florida. By the time we go into Thursday, we'll be looking at a little clipper system in the upper Midwest with maybe a little bit of some snowfall for very far northern Minnesota. By the time we go into Friday, rainfall across parts of the Midwest and Ohio Valley. Right behind that is a cold frontal boundary. Lots of cold air advection right behind it. That'll lead to colder weather across the Midwest. By the time we go into Saturday to Sunday, high pressure system across parts of the Central Plains eventually shifting east. By the time we go into late Sunday, we'll be watching for rainfall across the Great Plains, stretching from North Dakota back toward the Gulf Coast with heavy rainfall being possible. By the time we go into Monday, we might be watching for some sort of severe weather event here to take place. Again, I'm not very confident that we're going to see a major severe weather outbreak by any means, but we might get a marginal or slight risk of severe weather in parts of the Southern Plains, maybe on Sunday, but a better chance I think will probably be Monday if this system does track out to the east. We will probably have a better pull of moisture and as well as more instability available by the time we get to Monday. But again, we're still multiple days out and things are definitely bound to change. By the time we go into Tuesday, this low pressure system likely will move to the east. But again, things could change a little bit here over the next several days. If this happens, we'll be looking at rainfall from the Ohio Valley back through the east coast through Tuesday and eventually going to Wednesday. Again, things become pretty uncertain by this point. But again, I'm not really seeing any major winter weather event either out of this. It'll likely be mostly rainfall, which again, we're in November. You might be thinking we should have more winter storms right now well this one will not be a winter storm again it's coming out of the pacific ocean and usually when that happens these systems are not really as favored for winter storms especially during this time of the year when the weather is just so warm right now here's the instability by the way for this upcoming weekend so going into sunday that's the time frame we're watching for there will be enough instability for severe weather but will the other ingredients be in place like shear the lift all that sort of stuff that's all kind of to be determined right now but obviously we do have at least some sort of setup here with instability looks like a better chance i think near the gulf coast maybe mississippi back into alabama going into monday so again a couple days to watch for but those in oklahoma arkansas texas louisiana mississippi tennessee alabama really should at least be weather aware during this time frame because there might be some severe weather but again i don't foresee any major severe weather outbreaks one big thing that will be coming with these storms is colder weather right now the climate prediction center between wednesday of next week until tuesday of the following week so basically almost the rest of november we're going to be looking at the potential for below normal temperatures stretching from the Great Plains back toward the East Coast, which is good news if you're looking forward to more late fall and maybe even early winter sort of weather. Here are the temperatures for the next several days. So again, today we're pretty above average for most of the country. By the time we go into Wednesday, 70s, even 60s, maybe even the 50s potentially in parts of the upper Midwest, which is not common for this time of the year. That's well above average. By the time we go into Thursday, cold front represented here back up closer to Minnesota. Big sharp divide here between 50s and 30s across parts parts of the northern plains and midwest by friday that cold front rolls through the midwest temperatures dropping into the 40s for highs for friday by the time we go into saturday the cold front goes as far south as texas but it will not be strong enough for it to really drop temperatures dramatically in texas by the time we go into sunday into monday colder weather will likely come behind that next storm that we're looking at going into early next week so sunday monday tuesday and that should allow for temperatures to drop into the 50s for highs and maybe even 30s and 40s for lows in parts of the southern plains by the time we get to Tuesday and Wednesday morning. By the time we go to Thanksgiving, here's an early outlook for high temperatures across the United States, subject to change. We might be a bit chilly back up in the Northern Plains, but some of the Central Southern Plains, Gulf Coast, and back into the Southeast and East Coast look to be a little bit above average for this time of the year. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.